Hey everybody, it's Bruce. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu onto a USB stick and then we're going to use Clonezilla to copy that installation image to a PC. Okay, so this is the computer that we're going to be using today. It's actually a very nice computer. It's a... a H Now, this USB flash drive has Ubuntu 16.04 image on it, ISO image burned to it. So this is an installation disk, and I'm not going to show you how to do that because there's tons of places online you can see how to do that, but I did use the uh, startup disk creator, which comes with Ubuntu, to create this Ubuntu startup disk. So that's all this is. It's a two bit, two gigabyte USB drive, and it has Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support uh, installed on it, or flashed to it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the computer right now. Now with this computer, I've already set it up. So when it turns on, it tries to boot to whatever USB drive is in it to begin with. Once once I get the computer set up and finished, then I'll turn that off, but while I'm doing this work, it seems to be easier. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. All right, and so what you see here is the standard installation interface when you have a, an installation disk. It's just asking, do you want to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu? We want to install Ubuntu. But at this point in time, I'm going to take my second USB stick and I'm going to plug it in. Alright, so now we have two USB sticks plugged in. The original one that's actually running right now, it's running the Ubuntu installation disk. And then the other one which we're going to actually put the operating system on. So now that it's plugged in, I'm going to hit install Ubuntu. I'm not going to connect to the network right now. And I think I will install the third party uh, software. Okay, now this part here is kind of important. I've had trouble in the past when I'm trying to install to a USB stick by just using a, any of these default options. So what I'm going to do is something else. Hit continue. In the something else area, it's going to allow us to partition our drive the way we want it to be. Yeah, it looks like we're good. So I'm going to hit this drop down and see which drive I want to use. Uh, that's a six, that's a SanDisk Ultra 16 gigabyte USB stick. So I found that one right here under Dev slash SDC. Basically, SDC is the part we're interested in. So I click on that. Then I'm going to look over here at the this other part and look for the SDC. There it is, right there. And if I go down a little bit, I can see it already has three partitions because actually I've already done this once. But uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is delete these and create new ones just to show you what it would be like if you didn't have any. So I hit the minus sign on that partition, now I have some free space. Hit the minus sign on the other partition, now I have free space. And hit the minus sign on the third partition, now I have free space. So now the SDC um, disk has only free space, 16 gigabytes. So I click on that free space and I'm going to create three partitions. I'm going to create the regular uh, full, you know, root partition. I'm going to create the boot partition, and I'm going to create a swap partition. So hit the plus. I'll go ahead and just do the uh, boot first. Now the boot partition can be very small. I really don't know how big you should make it, but I a lot of times just make it 120 megabytes, and then I make the mount slash boot. Hit OK. And then if you come down here, there it is. Now back on free space, I can make my swap partition. And then a weird thing is it seems like different flash sticks, flash drives, USB sticks have different requirements here. I have another one that's a different brand and I don't have to put any swap in it. But this one, I had to put one gigabyte swap space in it, which I didn't really like, but it seems like it doesn't work any other way. Basically, the installation will fail. And here, I have to tell it its swap area. Okay. 
These options here I've always just left default. So hit OK. And then go back down. Now it's kind of funny because it looks like the free space is missing, but actually it's down there. You have to scroll down all the way. And finally, hit plus again. And this, the remaining data, I'm going to make the root right there. And just leave it at whatever it is. Hit OK. Okay, so now it's ready to go. Now just hit install now. Now it's just telling you, you know, that it's going to format these, this disk and partition it, and of course all your data will be lost. I say OK, continue. This is really standard. Um, you just pick your time zone. And when you pick the right city, it also guesses what keyboard you might have which is correct for me, just the default Swiss keyboard. Now I have to give it a name. I'm just going to call this one admin1. You can't use the name admin, it doesn't let you. And then for the name of the computer, I don't like such a long name, so I'm going to take the admin off here and just call it, let's say, Elite Book 8540P, uh, username we'll leave as it is and then a password for now just because uh, we're going to be putting, punching it in a lot I'm just going to make it one two three later on once I'm ready I'll make a real password for it okay and I'm going to set it to log in automatically just to make it easier while we're setting up hit continue now this will take some time I'm not sure exactly how much time I, maybe 15 minutes or so I'll go ahead and stop the video and let you know how long it ends up taking. Okay, so now the installation finished and it says we need to restart. It took about 20 minutes. So I'll click the restart button. And now it says to remove the installation medium. So there it is removed and press enter now it looks like it's restarting and I still have the other uh, USB stick plugged in that now should have Ubuntu installed on it so so now it should be booting onto that uh, to that other USB stick Yes, indeed. You can see it's probably the first time because of this uh, keyboard shortcut. Now, a weird thing is, I don't know why, I mean, it doesn't let me shut that. Because, like I said, I've already done this once and I had the same problem. It will just go away by itself when I do something else. It's like it really closed, but the graphics didn't refresh. Uh, it's a bit of a bug. Uh, one thing, first thing I always do is get rid of this Amazon. There it goes. I get rid of this Amazon thing here. Um, and the next thing I do is just connect to the internet. And there is also a bug here in that it takes me about three or four times to connect before it actually connects. And I have no idea why, but I have to just enter in the password and everything about three or four times. And once it's connected, it's fine. It never breaks the connection. It's 100%, but it takes like three times, and I don't know why. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and do that off camera. Then I'll. Uh, install all the software I want. I won't bore you through that, but I have a certain amount of software I want. And then I will set the background image as I want it. And then I'll uh, turn the camera back on and show you where I'm at. Okay, so I'm back. And I have my computer set up the way I want it. I set the uh, background image as I want, and I put a couple applications on it. Actually, there's some more things I want to do, but I'm going to come back and do that later. So. Next thing we need to do is go get an application called Clonezilla. So I'll type in Clonezilla. O N E Z I L L A. Okay, so I'll just go to their website. 
then go to downloads. I'm just going to take the uh, stable version and my CPU architecture is AMD64 but I'm going to take it in an ISO format and I'll auto pick the repository. Alright, so I'll save the file. I'll come back to you when it's finished. Alright, looks like Clonezilla is almost done downloading. I guess I should have explained a little bit about what we're doing with Clonezilla. Clonezilla is an application it, it actually runs not on the operating system but kind of has its own mini operating system and what it does is then it can clone any disks you have so if you have in our example we have this installation on this USB disk and now with Clonezilla we'll be able to copy it to this actual hard disk on this computer but first we need to uh, burn this ISO to another uh, USB disk or um, CD or anything, but we're going to use a USB key. So anyway, now that we have it downloaded, let's go ahead and open this uh, application called, I don't remember, what's it, disk something? D-I-S-K, ah, startup disk creator. This is installed by default with Ubuntu 16.04. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit so you can surely see everything. All right, so what are we looking at? It's actually already selected by default um, what I just downloaded, Clonezilla Live. Uh, so I don't really have to do anything. I guess it was looking at, by default, the downloads folder, and that was only ISO in the downloads folder. And then now it's looking at, OK, actually, this is a problem. It's looking at the disk, which the operating system is currently on, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is grab yet another USB stick and I'm going to plug that in. This one happens to be 4 gigabytes. It doesn't really matter too much. Cancel out of that. Okay, and that's nice. It recognized it right away. So I'm just going to click on that one. I don't want to obviously burn it to my operating system. I don't know what would happen in that case. Okay, so I'm going to say make startup disk. So it's going to make a startup disk of the ISO that I just downloaded, which is Clonezilla. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, installation is complete. You, you may now run Ubuntu on other computers by booting them with the drive inserted. Well, that's not totally true because I guess this startup disk creator is assuming you're going to make Ubuntu disks, and in this case I'm not. Um, so that message is kind of rubbish. So I'm going to go ahead and say quit though. Another thing we wanted to do, another goal, is that the users will log in with a guest account and that they won't be able to modify anything means they can't install any software, they can't save any files to the computer, and they can't change anything. And every time somebody logs back in, every time the computer is restarted, uh, it'll be back to its default setting. So I know by default there's already a guest guest session here that's just out of the box but I want to have our own settings in the guest session meaning I want uh, this, you know the the background image to be the way I want it and I want uh, the language maybe anything anything basically I want to be able to control that guest session as it is now the guest session is totally default on help.ubuntu.com I found a nice guide that actually shows how to do what we want to do so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and the way to do it is it seems kind of not so great but it does work is you need to create a new account so go to the users account and what you're going to create is kind of a template that that then you're going to have the system the guest session copy the attributes of this template account so I'm going to say unlock. That will allow, allow me to make modifications here. Put in our simple password. Now I'll be able to add a new user. User is going to be a standard user. And we're going to name him guest. 
dash p r e f s Okay, there we go. We have guest prefs. Now I should be able to there enable the account. And in order to enable the account, you gotta put a new password in. All right, that's pretty annoying how strong of a password you have to put in there, but fine. Okay, so I think its pa its account is now active. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the guest prefs account. All right, as you can see, it's a new login. Okay, for some reason that time it lets me close it. Uh, now I need to set this up the way I want it. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this Amazon thing. I do have more settings than I'm gonna do, but just for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this just for the demonstration. Um, now we need to go to the terminal. And now we have some commands to put in. All right, so we need to make a directory called guest session here. So sudo mkdi. So what we're looking at now is again the um, guest preferences account. I'll go ahead and do a restart just to show you that you can, it is now linked. If you go into the uh, guest session, it will have the background. Okay, so the auto login is into the admin account. Now let's go ahead and do our guest session which has no password. Okay, and it has the background as we want it. Also the Amazon uh, icon is gone. And you can see as it's a guest account, it tells the user that they can't anything they save to the disk will be deleted, which I was thinking about getting rid of, but to be on the safe side, I think I'll leave that. It's a little bit annoying, but I can imagine different people will be using this computer. Somebody's not gonna know, obviously, that things won't save and they may lose their stuff and be very angry. So we'll leave that up as, a, as a, an extra warning. All right, great. So now we have the guest session linked with the guest preferences account. All right, shuts down nice and fast. Now that it's shut down, I'm gonna pull out the, the USB, which has the operating system. And we're gonna plug in the clonezilla USB and power the computer back on. Okay, that starts up very fast and if I remember right you can just use the default setting to begin with. Now at this point I'm going to actually plug in the operating system that I just had plugged in a few minutes ago. That's because we're gonna clone the operating system from that that USB onto the computer's actual hard drive. Okay. Now uh, here we can just pick the language we want to use. I'll pick default English. I don't actually know what this means, but I saw in another uh, tutorial to not mess with it, so I'll say don't touch, which is default. So I'm not going to do this with the command line. I'm going to use the graphical interface. And then this is an important part. Do you want to go from a device to an image or device to device? I'm going to go device to device because <clears throat> I have the operating system on that USB stick and I want to, that's a device and I want to put it on the hard drive. So it's device to device. I'm going to say beginner mode because I'm definitely a beginner. So disk to local disk, I think that's our one, or you can do remote disk. I think that might be if you're using the network. Partition to local part. So I'm just gonna say disk to local disk. I think that's the right option. Okay, now it's important that you read this part very closely. Choose the local disk as source. Keyword here, of course, is source. So I happen to know mine. It's nice to give you quite a bit of information here and you know the full name of the disk. Um, so our source, I know, is gonna be the 16 gigabyte SDC. So I say, okay, that's the source. Now it's saying, what is your target? What is the destination? Well, there's no more choices left, but anyway, I can see 320 gigabyte. I happen to know that's the hard drive on the computer. So I say, okay. 
Um, this is about advanced parameters. I'm going to say default and just hit OK. So here it's saying, what do you want to do when it's finished? I'm going to actually say power off when it's finished. This is actually pretty nice. I, I would like to... I'm glad that I'm recording this because it's basically saying down here that next time instead of doing all this dialogue, I can actually just run this command, which might be nice because then I can put this into a script and make it easier for our local local administrator to, uh, to do this. Anyway, hit enter to continue, and now it's working. Uh, are you sure you want to continue? It's making double sure that you're not screwing something else, something up. Uh, it, I know I did it right. I'm really sure, so I'm going to say yes. Anyway, oops, ah, it thinks I have an American keyboard or an English keyboard because my Y is a Z, so I need to type Z to make a Y. And am I extra sure? Lots of explanation marks. Zess, <laughs> yes. Do you want to clone the bootloader? Executable code area first. Uh, yes, I do want to do that. Okay, now it's running. This part, as I remember, will take a little while. Even though it says 100 to 100, that's not true. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop it and come back when it's finished. Okay, so it looks like everything is finished, and it's telling me to take out my USB sticks. So I take out the Clonezilla, and I take out the operating system, and I hit enter to continue. Now shut down the computer. Now is the test. I'm going to start it up and hope that everything was copied correctly. Still getting this grub menu. I need to disable that. Okay, that looks good. Admin 1. Let's see if our guest session works. Actually, I'll, I'll need to, con and I should actually do it, I should configure it on the master image, the other one from the USB disk, so that it automatically boots up to the guest session, not the admin account, obviously. But anyway, this is just a demonstration, so. Actually, there's a lot more things. Yeah, good, that looks perfect. There's actually a lot more things I want to do. There's more software I want to put on here. Um, quite a few different things we have to do to it before it's actually ready. In addition, we need a, the French language pack because in Benin, the, the primary language is French. So uh, yeah, there's quite a bit more configuration I'm going to do to uh, to this uh, kind of master, master image USB. And uh, so that's a nice part about it. So this is my master USB. Now I can just configure it however I want. Now I can shut the computer down, plug this one back in, load it up, do all the configurations I want, then using my other USB here, this uh, Clonezilla, I can clone this onto any computer. So basically that's how it works. It's pretty easy and, and I'm going to explore the possibility of using that one command line that it showed me uh, before because that might make it even more easy. Maybe I can make a, uh, um, a shell script or something with that command line in it and then then that could be even simpler. But all right, one more thing I wanted to add. Um, one limitation or one thing to consider is that that master USB. This was a 16 gigabyte USB drive, one gigabyte I put for the swap space, a little bit for the boot area, so I think we ended up getting around probably 14 gigabytes. And because we're cloning that one to the computer disk, even though this is a 320 gigabyte uh, hard drive, it's only going to see, you know, around 14 because it cloned the, uh, the USB disk. So if I go to computer and then go to properties, right, so it shows total capacity of 14.5 gigabytes. Zoom in there. So that's a kind of a limitation that's maybe not great in some people's application. In this case, because everybody's going to be using that guest session, everybody's going to be a guest, nobody's going to be installing anything, um, it's fine. Nobody's going to be downloading anything or putting on this, these computers. We're simply going to add some software, which I, I'm pretty sure will be less than the total disk capacity, and that's it. So we don't need anything bigger than a 14 gigabyte hard drive, or 14 gigabytes free, 16 total. Um, 
But that's just one thing to keep in mind that when it clones, it clones from the size of the source. You know, it doesn't uh, it doesn't just uh, repartition it to use all the free space. Unfortunately, that would be a nice feature though if you could um, make that uh, root directory expand into whatever else is free, or maybe you could ask you some questions about that. But that's not the case here. So uh, you get the size of the disk that was on the source. Anyway, this that's it pretty much it for the demonstration uh, for this demo. I hope that's helpful to somebody. I'm definitely not an expert at using Clonezilla or any of these things, but uh, I did figure it out and I think maybe it will be useful for somebody. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye.